good evening and welcome to another episode of Game Hater, the show where we look at our backlogs and cry. Um, tonight we're playing Dungeon Souls. This is the start of Roguetober. Otherwise known as Roguetober! Roguetober! <laughs> yes. <laughs> this, was, uh, this was Aaron's idea. It's a fantastic idea. We're going to take the month and play roguelikes. Yeah, the, the original rogue was wildly unforgiving and, and had none of that permanent anything nonsense. Okay, so we've got some different classes. Okay, so the classic three. Barbarian, thief, and, uh, and archer, archer, yeah. yeah. Just missing a wizard and you'd have uh, gauntlet. I think I'll go with barbarian. Can't go wrong when you go with a barbarian. Yeah. Not the most complicated characters, typically, but good survivability. What's happening here? What do I... There we go. So is this like a mouse-based game with the whole targeting reticle on top it, of your character? It does look kind of mousy, doesn't it? Yeah. But at the same time, maybe it's because I have a gamepad connected, but that cursor is not moving. Hmm, that's interesting. Yeah. Kind of annoying. Yeah, I know, like, we can't even look at the whole character without that whole reticle on top of him. Right. I mean, I want to look at those beefy man-arms. The game will not let me... Well, of course, I want the map on the screen, get my stats, just, just familiarizing myself with the buttons. I have skill points, that's pretty cool. And I can't seem to change what I'm selecting, so... Oh no, I lost control of my computer. I guess I'll use the point. Okay, that's how I change it. Good, good, good. X swing. Shot of rage. So, yeah, barbarians are now forever tied to Skyrim. <laughs> that does seem to be a, a running theme with barbarians in video games. Alright, let's get a Thunder Axe. Because, hey, why not? If I can figure out how to get the Thunder Axe. Remember that time in gaming before Skyrim was a thing? Yeah. NES era, roughly. I think that sounds about right. That's about when Skyrim came out, right? I think the first Skyrim was, was on the Super Nintendo. Yeah, it's amazing that they've just ported it so many times since the Super Nintendo. It, it just keeps getting better and better every time, too. Why do the side stats? Yeah, I do not like this whole live... Live, uh, the live menu stuff. thing? Yeah, I can't even... Oh, I'm being stomped. Go away. Yeah, I mean, here you are trying to do something and you're getting murdered. Right. Man, that's that's invasive. Like, I, I, I know Dark Souls has done things like that, but there's places where you're safe. Maybe there are places where you're safe here. I sure as hell haven't seen one. Oh, and, and okay. Now there's a shop. So do I carry gold over? I don't think I got any gold. Or whatever red dots are. Yeah, I don't see anything on your screen that indicates whether you can use any of those. Track nearby coins, I like that. The, uh, the controls are kind of obtuse. So I'm using the right shoulder bumper button. N not, not even the trigger. To swing my sword. Which I, I guess is a callback to Dark Souls. Destroyed. And I, I suppose we should expect a lot of Dark Souls influence in the game that is called Dungeon Souls. That makes sense. Uh, it seems like Dark Souls had a pretty big effect on, uh, especially roguelike type games. Yeah, yeah, it has. I guess it does lend itself to that. I mean, Dark Souls itself was, was not a roguelike. I had to stop pressing that button. Um, it wasn't a roguelike, but it did have a very punishing death system, but also a recovery mechanic where you could go pick up your XP from your own fallen corpse. And that's kind of nice. Yeah. I gotta say, it's it feels like this game is... Um very unforgiving in combat, like, there doesn't even seem to be anything you really do in combat that makes you more effective, you're just being hoarded, and then, uh, yeah. 
And it doesn't seem like the enemies even have attack animations. They just walk into me. Yeah. I have not discovered any defense yet. So good thing I've got giant barbarian health. I'll take. I, I should have looked at the controls be, before I started doing anything. That's that's on me. Yeah, but at the same time, like I always like a game where you can just sort of feel out the controls right away, just because. It's, you know, both well-designed and because there are certain, you know, expectations when it comes to control styles. Yes, absolutely. And, and this is a really weird control style. Like, three of my face buttons are menu-related. Oh. So, so B is map. Uh, mini map on and off. Skill menu, stat menu. That's, that's kind of messy. And it looks like that cursor is controlling what direction I'm facing. So that's so, something I should be aware of. That's, that's a really weird. It's like, yeah. why not just give this game, like, a, you know, any kind of straightforward um, overhead type gameplay style? Yeah, yeah, that, that's, the, uh, that's the reluctant gamepad control scheme. So you're thinking maybe this more meant to be like a, maybe a mouse controlled game that just has sort of shoehorned in. Gamepad controls. That's what I'm thinking, yeah. I don't know how to get my items to activate. Yeah, because th this I think would play a bit more more like Diablo with a mouse and keyboard. Mm hmm. But with the gamepad, I have to be rotating my body with the stick constantly. And you know, now that I know that that's a thing, I can do it. What I'm more concerned about is how I use my health potions. I've got a stack of them. And well, have you ready to go into a menu? It'll probably kill you for it. <laughs> yeah, right. Some some enemy will just attack up. That's all I've got time for. Yeah, some enemy will ruin my day. Options, controls. Here we go. Okay, use item D-pad up. Stats menu. Map, open inventory, abilities around triggers, okay. So D-pad up, D-pad up, D-pad down, <laughs> okay. You know. Does that even do anything for you then? I, I did get some health. Okay. Yeah, this is not a good complaint, a control scheme. Either they no. should have just, you know, nixed the gamepad altogether or come up with something separate for the gamepad. Right, yeah, yeah. They, they, yeah, they, they tried to geez, force mouse, mouse and keyboard into the gamepad. And it, it's not even that hard to do well. You just have to have your character automatically face the direction you're pressing. You need a second stick for that. Yeah, I mean, you're, Zelda did it, like, you know, 30 years ago. It's nothing new. <laughs> Pac-Man was doing it, like, what, 35 years ago? Even, uh, I, I can't say Pong did it, but I'm tempted to say that. <laughs> well, like, what was, like, the predecessor to Zelda, like, because a game called Adventure? Mm -hmm. An old Atari game? I managed to do it. I mean, you really couldn't tell... What direction your character was facing because <laughs> it was a white a block. Rectangle, yeah. Okay, so I seem to have cleared the floor. And now I can go to level two. Exciting. How long can I survive trying to do it? Oh, come on. You spawned right on me. What? What? No, no, no. I don't know what that guy's deal was, but I want nothing to do with it. Yeah, that was so confusing. Like, I didn't realize, do we go to a different floor? Does the boss go out of nowhere? I guess in the spirit of the show, I should have investigated that more, but... All right. Um... Well, I mean, we're so, you know, so busy trying to survive. Um, that looked like a situation that was going to lead us to not surviving, so... <laughs> right, yeah. It, it, that's, that's another really good point about roguelikes in general. Come on. Oh, this menu. Um... 
it, it all comes down to risk management. That's the root of the genre. Do I want to keep exploring rooms or do I want to go to the next level? Do I want to try to collect resources so I can buy something in the shop? Everything you do is a risk. Everything's a resource. Exactly, so. yeah. That's what makes it so exciting just because um, you can't just go into something blind and be okay. Like, yeah, you can keep playing if you die, but, you know, all the, a lot of your progress is going to be gone. So it's not like your typical game where you go to a safe, you know, station and then just mm -hmm. keep going and you're making some big dumb risk and learning from it. If you die, you got to start all over yeah, again. Yeah, it's a big setback. Frantically picking up health potions. Which really makes it, like we said before at the beginning, like makes it really more arcadey. Definitely more in the style of the old video games, even if there is special elements to, you know, incentivize you replaying it, as opposed right. to, you know, just the old NES games or Atari games. And that's it for that run. Well, I made it to level two that time. Yeah. Got 1346 coins. How All about right. that? And now the shop to spend them on. Yeah, where is the shop? I found them a while hey. ago. In yeah, I didn't start us next one this time. No. I wonder if there's some wacky requirements for opening the shop door. Yeah. Then again, you are leveling up, so maybe you kept your levels? Let's see. Sometimes you do. Uh, nope. Well, you're level two. I, that's because I just leveled up. I was, oh. I was four or five. I died. Ooh, golden key. So that's interesting. Like we're not really seeing what our incentives are for replaying. Then. Yeah, I mean, this could be a pure, pure roguelike. I'm really not a big fan of these uh, rooms that we're walking into and just getting a bunch of enemies. It feels very, yeah, very lazy to me. It's it's kind of lazy. Lazy is the word. No doubt. I mean, they're not locking us into a room, so they're not going that far. <laughs> we we are free still. to leave. But, yeah, so we're walking around and, and clearing mobs. But, that's yeah, pretty un uninspired. I feel like a good enemy, you know, you can um, get more value out of them instead of making them into a ward. Um, being able to place them into interesting environments, interesting obstacles. Yeah, yeah. They value about them that way, but this is just giving us different sprites that do slightly different things. And, yeah, and like you say, the layouts aren't even that interesting. And, and part of that, I think, is w without any meaningful defense, defensive mechanics that, that we've seen, at least, um, there's not much more you can do. I think it's interesting also that um, between lives is not even giving us an option to like switch between different classes either. Well, I've been doing a quick restart. So I think well, the, the other option is to actually go to the title screen. Ooh, plus five bonus damage. Let's find that out. I am noticing that it doesn't look like we actually kept any of our gold either. We only have 727 gold, yep, whereas we yep. died with 1,300. Gold got blown up. Where's my... Didn't I buy a skill? I probably bought a skill. So, so another interface issue is the skills and items are not clearly labeled. So you've got four slots for items, three for skills, it looks like. And it's not labeled on screen which button is which, so you have to kind of feel that out. Yeah, you just kind of uh, memorize where it's all at, I guess. Yeah. Okay, so let's look at some other options. Arcane Forge. Crafting. Okay, so we do have some gold here. So we have 2,574 yeah. gold. Adjusting the screen. Okay. So it's less linked to like a specific, you know, playthrough and more to the entire game itself, which yeah. is a little bit different. You get that sometimes. Mm -hmm. It's more used to, you know, having it like in its own, like, you know, save file that you're working on so you can start over and have something separate. Right, we've got spoilers for other classes now too. 
Yeah, that's an interesting mechanic. So, so it looks like enemy loot is what really matters. But I can't do anything with it yet. Um, yeah, so there was like nothing we could do then, I guess. Yeah. So yeah, I'm curious now how you how you would unlock. Oh, what's this now? I can buy. Oh, I'm just pressing random buttons, but it looks like I can buy some permanent upgrades too. Interesting. Oh no, I went to play as the archer. Yeah, so this quick restart thing is just a bad idea because I'm missing out on opportunities to improve my characters. Okay, being the archer. I love how they're all like um, dead by default and you have to revive them. Yeah, yeah, I, li I like that too. That's a nice touch. Okay, so she can get an arrow shoe, pentuple arrow, random arrows, invisibility thief bomb. I don't see a dodge roll. Interesting. Hmm. No dodge rolling for anybody. I'm almost never a ranged character, at least certainly not an archer. When we ranged, I'll go wizard. So this it's... is where I can see um, the mouse and keyboard being really handy. Yeah, mouse and keyboard would be way better for the archer. By the way, those red things that I keep stepping on are traps. <laughs> <laughs> well, that didn't take long. You actually collected something, and I wonder if it actually got a... What do I say? No, no, no. Mishandling backup space. That's kind of weird. But it almost made it seem like you actually had something you took with you with that Traveler's Cloak. Oh, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I did not pay enough attention. Okay, so so the thief is basically like the archer, too, then. Yeah, just different stats. And way worse accuracy. And an uh, inordinate number of daggers he can throw. Yeah. Dagger, 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 dagger. Well, I mean, thieves are known for their ability to throw millions of daggers in the air. Oh, naturally. I mean, why would else would they steal if they didn't need to, you know, go buy, you know, thousands and thousands of daggers? Yeah, and going back to Skyrim, you know, building lots of daggers is, is the only way to get good at forging so you can make the best daggers. Yeah, which is why, you know, thieves end up being the best blacksmiths and eventually realize, hey, I don't need to turn to a life of crime. I forged so many daggers to throw at people while stealing from them that I know I'm an expert blacksmith. That's right. He has learned a very valuable trade. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I and think died. <clears throat> my play style right now I need to be the barbarian. You can take difficulty too down there. Oh, it's not. It's not embarrass myself that much. <laughs> I was looking at health meters for other characters, and the, the thief was like 40, which is why I was in that room for all of 30 seconds. Right. No, not the redeemer. I was like, no, let's go. Yeah, so the, the Redeemer's there to, to pressure you to get on with it once you've... Which well, is weird, because there's not even like a timer that you can see, so you just gotta go with it and uh, hope it doesn't show up out of nowhere, I guess. Yeah, well, I, I think it's whenever you've activated all the portals, then the Redeemer comes out to play. Yeah, the problem with the Redeemer is that Sometimes you just want to be like, hey, I got through this floor, let me relax and poke around in these confusing menus and level up my dude. But no, you just have to book it back to the... back to the entryway. Yeah, especially for a game where it wants you to be able to play um, pretty much, you know, from start to finish being the ultimate goal. Not mm -hmm. really giving you any kind of rest stops. Right, that's yeah. That's like a good 
game design choice. Like, it looks like you do have one menu you can go into that completely stops the game. And that's where you're deciding if you're going to quit the game or not, but that's about <laughs> right. it. Yeah, I, I, I agree. It's 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 a little little odd. Is it just not letting you select anything then? Yeah, not allowed to touchy the items. That's too bad. I would like to actually be able to forge something while we're actually playing this game within the first hour we're doing it. Right. This is something we should be able to do with, like in the first ten minutes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, after the first run, they should be like, Hey, I'm the Forge guy. You want to forge a thing? Yeah, not really calling your attention to all this kind of stuff is kind of a waste. Right. Yeah, especially with that, that quick restart. Because quick restart is for chumps, clearly. Yeah, it makes and it sort of implies that there's nothing else to this game if you have the quick restart. Right, yeah. I mean, I, I could have played two straight hours burning with just quick restart. And that would have given me very much the wrong impression of this game. So we are seeing that you can spend your money on these passive upgrades. Are they, like, permanent then? Seem to be. But yeah, this, uh... Ooh, Necromancer's unlocked. I guess we're doing one more run. Sweet. Guess I killed enough skeletons to, uh, learn how they work. Yeah, the... But then, like, each of these different classes, I think they have their own different buffs that you're unlocking. Like, it's not a buff, um, buffing, like, all of them at once. It's just buffing one particular class, which is not necessarily ideal. No. Yeah, you'll have to commit to one you like, really, rather than uh, class around. Oh, we actually made it to a boss. Yeah. Oh, and he's a skeleton, man. Maybe they'll drop health potions. They do drop health potions. Sweet. That's what minions are for. So you just take, pick up the health potion. He has so much health. And you do not. <laughs> no. You are not doing well. I don't even know what's going on. the boss me where up. it would be really nice to be a ranged character. Yeah. And the dodge roll would be invaluable. All right, give us some minions to kill. Come on, dude. <laughs> yeah, I want those healths. Yeah, but bullet hell without a dodge roll is just cruel and unusual gameplay. Very much so. Another issue, my uh, item button is also my move button. So since I can't pause to use items, I have to, you know, do them on the fly. But I can't move. So I have to hold still while <laughs> trying to use items, right? And not die. Well, you know, I mean, you know, you're you're trying to drink something. You can't drink and you know walk at the same time. That's just that's uh, just physics, right? That's true. I would spill health potion all over my face. Oh, man, you're so close. Come on. Just gonna hang back. Oh! Oh no, oh. man! There was hope. It's not bad to be able to get that close to beating a boss though in your uh, first hour. Thank you. Um, yeah, I, I like the fact that that was an option. Uh, missed my chance on the Skeleton King. Okay, well here's the Necromancer. Let's see what I can buy for him. Okay, so actually you do keep the perks These then. are shared. Oh, well, that's just delightful. Okay, that's one point in the game's favor. We'll yeah. Give that to that. Do, do a greed buff. I like, I like those as a general rule. And now I can't afford anything else. Okay. And... Let's try him. Live, Necromancer. Oh, man, he has a wacky sprite. Yeah, he really does. All right, other rage character, but he's a wizard, which that makes it okay. All right, projectile, magic damage, normal attack, it's above skeletons. I don't even need to read the whole thing. Yeah, go 
forth my minions. Cool, and he has like his own health uh, bar too. Nice. Looks like his AI isn't particularly great, but he's <laughs> no. good meat shield, I guess. He's uh, he's a wise skeleton who's avoiding all fights. Doesn't like your health is a little bit flimsy though. Yeah, 60 is not a whole lot. Well, come on, you can help me with friends. Yes, he's coming on. Oh, what what just happened? There was like an archer up there shooting oh, at you. And <laughs> I was just standing <laughs> on a trap. Great start. Got the money. Yeah, why throw a shop at us when we can't even buy anything yet? Save that towards the end of the level. I think this is 4 7. Yeah, no kidding. Come on, guys. Work with us here. Right, I didn't read the skeleton text well enough, clearly, because I can't seem to figure out how to make it. You did it once. He's there, so. Yep, summon up to four skeletons to have health. Watch, I just get himself killed in the trap or something. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you have three of them. Yeah, now, now we can make a crap ton of skeletons. Holy shit. Now you can go and be the yeah. horde. Now I can look at uh, some menus for a while. That's pretty fabulous. Accidentally buy something. And all my skeletons are done. So they don't last too long. No, but it's not really their job to last long. No. I don't wonder how effective those guys are going to be on him. I don't know, but if, he, if nothing else, they will suck up some aggro. Looks like he's going to be pretty uh, easy this time around. Yeah. It's possible that the uh, Necromancer is super OP in the early game. Okay, I, I do have to wait to summon some skeletons, so there's some balance. Yeah, there's like a um, cooldown for it. Yeah. Looks like it's cooled down. Yep, so send in the horde. Oh, Skeleton King, you're being killed by your own people. You must feel awful. It's a peasant revolt. Yeah, this is what happens when the skeletons unionize. It looks like you unlocked a knight. Yeah. So, okay, good. So they're incentivizing us to keep going. Big item drop. Got a whole new interesting setting here to play with. And I'm dead. And die in. <laughs> okay. May as well try. A warrior. A warrior. Ooh, movement speed. That seems like a good thing, too. Health is good. Can I get two things? I don't think so. Try this guy out. Now it feels more like Rogue Legacy. Got a big giant sword for oh, yeah. his head. He looks so much like the Rogue Legacy guy. Okay, so he's going to be close range AoE. I think that's what his deal would appear to be. Ooh, that's quite cool. a cool attack. Yeah. And he has reasonable health. Not barbarian levels of health, but he has health. Yeah, I mean, obviously the fact that he's wearing armor means he doesn't have nearly as much health as a barbarian would. <laughs> right. I wonder if with his base, yeah, his base defense is, is higher than the barbarian. Which just goes along with what you just said. 
I mean, that's kind of how it works in the real world. I mean, if you wear no shirt at all, you just tend to have, you know, more life to you. But when we do put a shirt on, that's gone. Not, oh, jeez. All right. Not to mention the rock hard abs protecting you. Yeah, and you can't get rock hard abs by wearing clothes. No, no, no. You know, part of the motivation to get amazing abs <clears throat> is the fact that you know people are looking at your uh, at your stomach. Okay, so we uh, got sucked into a couple more runs than big plan, but that's, that's just fine. All right, um, so we were going to try out a slightly different review format for the final thoughts. Um, you know, it used to be just kind of a stream of consciousness conversation, but we're going to go a little more structured from now on. Bear with us as we... Get it down, but put down a, a list of kind of criteria for guiding the discussion. So right. first, for, first one is uh, genre bias. Um, Being that this is Rogue-tober, it kind of makes it obvious <laughs> that from the very beginning, this is a genre that we are both big fans of. So, of course, <laughs> this game also blends in more than just being roguelike. So it's also more than just that, which. Right. Um, it's more of an RPG. Um, yep. Yeah. So Diablo yeah. type game. Right. So, so to me, and, and I know there's no standard definition, but kind, kind of in my opinion, roguelike is a genre modifier more than a genre in and of itself. Um. So you know, I, I'd peg this one as a, a roguelike action RPG. Right. Um, that sounds about right. You, you, you can see the, the pretty clear gauntlet inspiration. And you know, the, a little bit... I, I, I don't know if, if Rogue Legacy was the game that did it first or just popularized it. But it's been really influential for, for Rogue Legacy as far as I can tell. With adding in some semi-permanent upgrades, or permanent upgrades. Um, so, so anyway, this, this kind of game is this one we both like. Um, it's not a bad example, gameplay-wise. Um, no, I think we, as we got on into it, we realized that there were some pretty decent incentives to uh, keep playing it. I mean... Yeah. We, we got pretty excited, you know, seeing that we we're unlocking these different characters. I mean, we played longer than we wanted to just to go like, oh, look, <laughs> Try we unlocked a Necromancer. And that's, if the game can make us keep wanting to play it, even though we realize we're already done, then that's a good <laughs> thing in the game's favor. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, the class distinction is good. Um, yeah, and for, for me, I get, I get frustrated with roguelikes if I feel like they get too arcadey. And I'm not making any meaningful progress. Not the case here. Yeah, I mean, we were able to get to that first boss pretty quickly, and yep. um, I played very uh, plenty of you know roguelikes where you know you feel like you're just not making any progress at all, just because you're not even able to get to that boss. And yeah. if you do get to the boss, it just completely, completely curb stop you immediately. Yeah, yeah. And then everything truly resets. Um, yeah, so, yeah, I, I think it's a perfectly fine example of a roguelike in the, in the modern style. Ooh, new, new character. So, the, the, the other big category is conveyance, and I, I think that's where this one doesn't do so well. So, you know, how, how well is this game explaining itself to us? Yeah, I mean, like, right off, like, we were stuck in this whole mode of immediately respawning, and the game wasn't, you know, explaining to us that, hey, maybe you don't want to immediately respawn. <laughs> maybe in between battles, you actually want to, you know, use all right. this code you've been collecting to actually improve your character, so there's actually a reason to respawn. <laughs> right, exactly. Um, and the Forge stuff, we still don't understand. We we haven't seen a recipe. Yeah, so I looked that up just so, so we could talk about it. Um, so apparently to do that, you have to, um, so you had to find like these 
empty shelves and there's like books in them and allows you to get to some kind of forbidden library at which point you can get to a recipe which and that's seems a little obtuse really arcane unless those book bookshelves are everywhere that's that's not cool yeah so i mean i feel like a good place for the recipes would be with these shops that would give us a good idea of where you can find things at right right or or the boss fights um, yeah exactly have, having them be that secret is is, is kind of lame especially for something you know as important as the ability to you know upgrade your character weapons and equipment and so forth so i mean right, like you right. have all these resources we're grabbing and if it takes that much effort to be actually able to use those resources that's not a good thing and, and not even just upgrading but getting new ones it, it looked like there were options to get new weapons that never had a chance right. to take advantage of and so yeah just going back to good bands like it just it did a poor job of explaining itself um Sure. I mean, eventually we were able to sort of figure things out, um, but obviously not to the full extent of how to play the game and really get everything out of it. This is like an example where I think um, sometimes it's really nice to have a game where they have loading screens where they just explain this kind of shit to you. Yeah, that, that's something that is a good use of loading screens. Like uh, Dark Souls, for example, the game that this one claims to be influenced by. I don't see a whole lot of Dark Souls influence personally, um, but they they use their load screens to show you item descriptions of, of items you you may or may not have yet. Yeah, and you can learn stuff. And then another thing uh, with conveyance is um, we talk about in our sort of our um, rubric whether or not it does a good job of telling you how to do things without a lot of dialogue or explanation, whereas right. this is one of the games where it doesn't use any kind of dialogue. <laughs> and it doesn't teach kind of you anything. Point. Yeah. But at the same time, we have all these really big menus to deal with. Um, yeah. And the game doesn't give you time to really study these menus because you're punished for using your menus. Right. Because there's never any right. time to actually stop and use them. Right, right. And, and that is is a big problem for me. Yeah. So it goes completely in the opposite direction of what we're usually concerned with and uh, doesn't give you any kind of that kind of stuff. Doesn't tell you anything, just sort of expects you to figure it out and then... Yep. In, in some or people, in this situation, you know, go to Reddit and figure out, you know, <laughs> someone else who managed to figure it out. Yeah, and that's the thing is... You know... It, you're either interested enough in the game to go to go ask someone on, online how to do anything... Or, or you give up. The, the whole deliberately obtuse thing, it can be used to help build a community around your game, but that's only if the game hooks people on its own merits. Yeah. And I don't see this game having a huge base to no. never really have people talking about it that much. Right. Yeah, I don't see a lot of super fans for this game. Um, which brings us to the... Uh, the last bit, which is kind of the the fun factor. Am I enjoying this game? Would I would I ever play it again? And you know that is really a maybe. I I've been I enjoying like this game maybe, more. I feel like maybe if the gameplay was a little bit tighter, this looks like a game that would have nice replay value. Like if yeah. I thought I could play this like a regular game, like the way it looks, and not a game that's you know made for a keyboard and mouse that lets you play with the gamepad anyway. Yeah. If it play, if it played better, I could see this being really fun to come back and, you know, really get in there and, you know, what is this going on? Did Al seem something? Making an owl? You gave me a magic essence, that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, th th this game, what's holding it back is the interface. And sure, you can, you can, you can learn to to cope with with a bad interface, but you, you shouldn't have to. This is 2017. Um, especially, we've been harping on it. You just mentioned it. This this game is not designed for a gamepad, and yet it gave me permission to use a gamepad, and yeah. that's kind of kind, kind of dishonest. I don't think it's too much of a stretch. No, I mean. 
you either have gamepad support or you don't. And I mean, it's perfectly fine to, you know, build a game that doesn't have gamepad support. It's not required. But right. if you are going to offer it, you need to offer it yeah. well. Make it good. Um, maybe with maybe with the range characters, I'd want to be doing something closer to dual stick aiming. But don't make me do it for melee. Yeah. I think there's a way of doing it where, you know, um, yeah, maybe it's not as good with a gamepad for a ranged character, but at least you're not being punished all the time for playing your... Playing yeah, your yeah. Or, or you could just make the melee characters work well with... without twin stick controls. Mm hmm So, if you play this game, bow to the will of the developers and just do it with a mouse and keyboard. And then also make sure you do your research to find out how to play the game because it's not <laughs> right. going to explain itself to you. Right. Either expects you to master everything by looking at it or to go look it up. Right. So I think this one is not terrible, but it's got a lot of little things holding it back. If they could patch in better gamepad support, that would that would help a lot. Um, work out something for conveyance. I don't want to talk to NPCs who are really pushy about making me try out forging things or something, but just some explanation text and better controls would, would really elevate this game to, to something yeah. pretty good. And I mean, you don't even need to have like better tech, you know, dialogue. If your menus are simple and easy mm. to follow, and this game does not offer us that, there are so many ways no. to make a forging system that's completely <laughs> self-explanatory. And this game, right, doesn't even try. Right, yeah, it, it doesn't. Like the only thing I can control is what ingredients I have selected. And then the other question is, um, is it worth the asking price? So I looked yeah. that up, and uh, so normal price is for this game is twelve ninety nine, which feels like a lot for a game this style me um uh, i don't know it, I, I think it depends on how many zones we're looking at um i see a lot of playable characters it, it looks like the, the crafting stuff is probably kind of grindy so you'll, you'll probably if you get hooked you'll you'll spend quite a few hours um I, I, yeah I, that's sort of the nature of the beast i mean it's very easy for any game like this to take a lot of your time um, just because of how much variation you can run into. Right. So, I don't know, 1299 doesn't, doesn't seem unreasonable to me. Right. It depends on how much enjoyment, I guess, you think you would get out of it. Um, yeah. Like, for me, I don't know if I would necessarily play that much for this game. If I happen to see it, you know, for cheap after, like, watching this video, I might be, you know, willing to give it a try. That's more of a, you know, wait for a good sale. Yeah. That's my say it would be for this kind of game right right yeah if it was like 30 bucks or something i'd be a little less indulgence all right so it's that's as much as we need to talk about um what do you think for final rating you know i don't think i could give this game a thumbs down i think it did um enough well that it doesn't deserve that mm-hmm I don't necessarily think I could give it a thumbs up either just because there is enough wrong with it to prevent it from being a solidly good game. So I'm not sure what our uh, middle rating is then. <laughs> I think it's sort of yeah. like, you know, waving hand, which is what I would give it. Right, yeah. With with these situations, I like to use the, uh, the closed fist shaking with rage that it was almost good. And closed fist is exactly where I am with this game. I... I think it could have been a lot better, but it's also not bad. Definitely a game with potential. Yeah. Could have been ironed out a little bit better, but yep. I mean, it still could. It was only released last year, so. Yeah, and, and if they're still working on it, I did not check if it's still being actively developed, but they could make a few tweaks and have have a good game. But right now, it's just an almost good game. Not entirely unpleasant to play. 
Okay. Well, I think that says about everything we're going to say about this game. So, uh, yeah. This is that was Dungeon Souls. Yeah. We we hate this game, and we're going to bed. See you next week for more Rogue Tober. Good night, everyone. Good night.